And this is the point of this psalm as we really look into it now. In order to experience true rest, you and I must receive three ingredients provided by the Good Shepherd. And the first of those ingredients is satisfaction. I could not find satisfaction until I found it in my Lord Jesus Christ. I could not rest until my satisfaction was found in Him. And we read here the 23rd Psalm in the first few verses. The Lord, through David, says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Several years ago now, a friend came alongside of me who was a Bible student, but he wasn't a pastor. And I thought I knew a lot more than he knew about the Bible. But he offered to have a Bible study with me, and he had a purpose in mind. He wanted to teach me some things. But I said, sure, Tom, that was his name, Thomas. Tom, uh, yeah, I'll do a Bible study with you. I'm a seminary grad. I'm a pastor. I study the Bible for sermons all the time. I'm working on a doctor's degree. Sure, I'll study the Bible. What do you want to study? So he turns to the 23rd Psalm. And I thought, this is like baby pablum. This is baby food in the Bible. We'll get through this quick and we'll get into something more interesting. Well, he began to read, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he paused. He stopped. And I thought, well, that's a nice thought. Why don't we move on to the rest of the psalm so we can get on to other things? But he didn't. The silence was beginning to be unbearable. I didn't want to read this again. I didn't want to hear it again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then suddenly I got the message in embarrassment that I was not seeking satisfaction in Jesus. Oh, I had throughout my life, much of the time, but I hadn't gotten off track because now I was a pastor. And now I had a wonderful wife and beautiful or wonderful boys, children and, and all of that. And uh, I had a nice church and it was growing. And, but I was dissatisfied. I wasn't happy. I was frustrated. I was demanding, wanting more and more and more. And then I re realized in a wave of the Holy Spirit that I had not been seeking satisfaction in Jesus, my shepherd. I had been looking elsewhere. And I had slipped. And I realized I need to come back to Jesus and come under his, his rod and his staff of shepherding and simply find contentment there. Now, just how does the Lord satisfy? Well, first of all, he brings rest and refreshment. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I understand that it takes a lot to get sheep to lie down. They have to be fed, they have to be full, they have to have water. You have to shoo the bugs away. You have to get them to rest and be contented. And sometimes he makes them with some kind of force to lie down. And sometimes some of us need to be forced to lie down. Sometimes a fatigue comes over us like I experienced six weeks in bed because of fatigue. I was so tired. He made me lie down in the course of life. Well, he makes us lie down in satisfaction, but not just anywhere. He, he leads us beside the quiet waters after feeding us, not waters that are too swift for us, nor those which are too still and stagnant and full of disease and bugs. And then he restores us. He brings restoration into our lives. A lot of us feel like used goods, broken, Experiences have happened to us. People have left us, abandoned us, harmed us, wounded us, and we feel broken. We may make the outside look attractive, but inside we feel used and abandoned and broken. And we live in a throwaway society. If it doesn't work, throw it out. Throw it in the garbage. Haul it away. We'll just get a new one. You don't fix things. You don't repair them. You just get new and replace the old. But not with God. He takes the broken, those wires that are in a mess, 
internally, and he reconfigures us into something beautiful, pleasing to his eye. He restores. That's our satisfier. Do you need restoration today? You've been so wounded, hurt in your life, but your Savior restores and brings you life. That's our good shepherd and how he satisfies. And then he gives us, he puts us on right paths, right reason for living. He guides me in paths of righteousness. No longer the kind of things that destroy us, that lead us astray and break us down, but in right paths. And the big thing we need to keep in mind with these right paths is that they satisfy him. It's for his name's sake. Satisfaction comes not as we seek our own way and will, but satisfaction comes as we live for his sake, for his name's sake. We must allow him to reorient us, to connect us to himself. Satisfaction comes as we live for someone who is bigger than ourselves the Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus. Larry Crabb has said it this way. He's a counselor and pastor. God's position seems to be that we will not properly value the good things of life until we first value Him. When we find our satisfaction and value in Him, then we begin to enjoy the other good things that He has given us. We walk outside, especially in the spring of the year, and we can smell flowers, lilacs, purple, beautiful spring trees and flowers. And we can see the sun, and it glows, and it is bright, and we see the shadows that are created by the sunshine, and we appreciate the created realm. Even the little bugs that might bother us are interesting to us. And even people that we used to, be a bother, used to be a bother to us are of interest to us. And we have this component of satisfaction through the shepherd. And he is our satisfier, and therefore we have this first part of rest. It's satisfaction. Where are you looking for satisfaction these days? Is it in finishing a school degree and you cannot rest until that's complete? Is it in a hope that you'll someday be married and you'll be discontented until? Or is it a hope that you were single once again? Well, we won't go there. Um, is it a hope of any kind that you have a certain job? Where is it? Your satisfaction must come first and foremost, foremost in Him, in Him. Do you have a shepherd? Have you made him, the shepherd, your satisfaction? I assume that because you're listening to me today, you've made him your savior, the one who takes away your sins and forgives you. But ever you, have you ever stopped, as I needed to do, and make him clearly your satisfier, the shepherd who satisfies? You might pray today and say, Lord Jesus, I love you as my savior, now I make you my satisfier, my good shepherd who satisfies. That's a step to being more satisfied in him that is very important. But that's just one part of it. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.